Hello and welcome again to Riverside Reflections. I'm your host, Denise Mananis, and today's guest is Dr. Vishal Mehta, who is an orthopedic surgeon with St. John's Medical Group, and uh, we have a lot to talk about today. Welcome to our program today. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Of course. It. We're thrilled to have you. So, Dr. Mehta, uh, many of our audience have already met you through um, a little project that we did with my team. Uh, we're calling it the Meta Reels, uh, <laughs> but you've done a whole bunch of sort of educational and uh, even some, um, you know, just knowledge-based short videos for our community. Yes. Uh, and so we thank you for participating <laughs> in that. You're a very willing victim of ours. Um, Absolutely. So to, we really wanted just to get to know you a little better. So if we could start by talking a little bit about, you know, who you are, where you're from, what your path of education was. So let's start with where you're from. Absolutely. So I originally grew up in the D.C. suburbs in Northern Virginia, a town called Fairfax, Virginia. Right. Uh, my family is all still there, but I grew up in Fairfax uh, up until high school, uh, was still there, and um, ended up coming uh, to New York afterwards. And I, I've lived here ever since. I went to college uh, at uh, NYIT in uh, Long Island, in New Old York. Institute of Technology. Technology? Okay. I did their seven-year accelerated program for um, medicine, okay. for medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, and after three years of college, went uh, straight into the medical program there at NICOM in Long Island. So NICOM is the New York College of Medicine. New York College of Osteopathic Medicine. Of Osteopathic Medicine. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, after that, I graduated from there and I got into residency at uh, Northwell Health's orthopedic residency program. Okay. Uh, I spent five years in that program, five long years For in the that residency. program. Yep. That's quite a training you got there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Orthopedics is five years of training, oh, wow. which was fantastic. Uh, I learned a lot um, and trained under some world-renowned surgeons at Northwell. Uh, and then afterwards, I, I, I did a fellowship. It's a super specialization uh, in sports medicine, arthroscopy, and I also learned how to do uh, joint replacement there as well. So where was the fellowship? The fellowship was actually at MedStar uh, Hospital System. It's a large hospital system in the D.C. Baltimore area. It's MedStar in Baltimore and at Georgetown University. Are there, are there hospitals in that system that I would recognize? Uh, so Union Memorial Hospital and then Georgetown Hospital in D.C. Yeah. All right. That's wonderful. So what brought you back to New York? So, uh, yeah, a few things. Um, my wife uh, is actually from Long Island, and so... That'll do yeah, it. Yeah, that will that was it. Um, in addition to that, uh, my partner, uh, Dr. Paul Ragusa, who's uh, also an orthopedic surgeon, um, him and I decided to start our orthopedic practice right out of fellowship. And it, upon looking at various areas uh, in the tri-state area, we decided that Westchester was kind of the best place for us to be uh, to create the impact that we wanted to create. Very nice. And so, I mean, I'm not sure what your connection was to St. John's, so tell me a little bit about how you got here. Yeah, so uh, we looked around the area in Westchester and we knew that St. John's was a uh, community hospital and that was really what we were looking for. Uh, we wanted to be uh, a big part of a big community and St. John's was a perfect gem of a hospital right on the river. Uh, when we visited, we, we knew that this was the right place for us to be. That's so, great. Yeah. And we're very thrilled that you, you got it, you got here. So let's talk about the fact that recently you joined the St. John's Medical Group. Yes. And you are the director of orthopedics for the medical yes, group. Yes, yes. So that's very interesting um, that you made that decision. Can you share with me why, why that was the right fit for you? Yeah, you know, I've, I've been operating and seeing patients at St. John's for several years now as part of different practices. and. Uh, when the opportunity arose for me, it was a very natural decision. Uh, St. John's is home now. I've been here long enough, and I know everybody. Everybody knows me. They know how, how I operate and vice versa. And I love the community so much that it was the perfect place for me to continue to grow my practice. And when the time for that decision uh, came, it was very easy for me to uh, you know, make the final decision and, and, and it, transition here. We're thrilled. <laughs> we're thrilled to have you. Likewise. Yeah. All right. Thrilled to so, be here. So let's talk a little bit about um, one aspect of your care, uh, orthopedic surgery joint replacements. Yes. So you do knees replacement and hips. 
Yes. And you do them makoplasty. Yes. So St. John's has had makoplasty available to the community, to our surgeons to use for about 10, maybe 11 years. We have a tremendous patient satisfaction yes. with that surgery. Um, can you first tell us what Mako is? Yes. And then and talk about your training and. Absolutely. So in fellowship, I, I first started to get really into uh, joint replacements with the makoplasty. And what that is, is it's the robotic technology that uh, allows you to be more precise in terms of your measurements, in terms of your balancing during a knee or hip replacement, which is really essential when it comes down to uh, patient satisfaction scores and how well they do after surgery. Um, so it really takes those joint replacements to the next level in terms of precision, uh, in terms of patient satisfaction, uh, and longevity of the actual of joint the, replacement. Of the implant. Yes. So my understanding is that the implant is so precise that it almost feels like your real knee. Yeah, so, so definitely the implants, especially the newer generation implants, are getting much, much better in terms of making patients feel like that. Um, and the robotics actually it really helps, especially in uh, total hip replacement, it helps to prevent dislocation. You can actually uh, section off exactly the angles that you want the implants to be input in, uh, and the robot helps you maintain those angles during the surgery uh, to help to prevent dislocation um, and to provide that outcome that we're really looking for. Right. Um, when we do a joint replacement, the outcome has to be perfect every time yeah. and, and really we accept nothing less. And so the robot is an essential tool these days right. um, and m uh, many orthopedic surgeons have switched to only makoplasty and only robotic surgery, which is what I've done, um, to maintain that level of excellence that we were looking for. But I think what sets me apart is that I also do sports medicine. And so a lot of the things in sports medicine are to uh, maintain a joint uh, prior to arthritis. And so I see patients in their younger years where arthritis is not necessarily a factor and I'm able to handle all of those procedures well. But then I'm also able to, at the end of that road or uh, journey. journey, really, um, I'm able to then do the uh, joint replacement as well. And so I, I see a lot of patients who start off not needing a joint replacement, who go through the process, and then finally when a lot of the other things don't work or their joint uh, over several years of, you know. Just deteriorates. Deteriorating um, due to wear and tear, for example, um, I'm able to actually uh, precisely do their joint replacement with a robotic technology. And so I think that's what I bring to the table in terms of being able to lead up, right. you know, handle everything leading up so, to the joint so replacement. So you're saying there's, a, there's a, an opportunity for prevention, you're looking at uh, helping them, even when you send someone for physical therapy before they are even a, a, a candidate for MAKO. Yeah, absolutely. You're looking at trying to help them preserve the joint. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, there are a lot of young patients with some level of arthritis that are sometimes too young to <laughs> to have joint replacement. And so um, and so a lot of the times, you know, my expertise is to help to prevent the uh, deterioration, the further deterioration of that joint. And, yeah. and so I bring kind of both sides um, of that uh, to the table. So I know that our megoplasties are done at the Dobbs Ferry Pavilion, yes. uh, which is this little jewel of a hospital. Uh, it's part of our system. Uh, we have the Westchester Orthopedic Center there where all, all of our orthopedic surgeries are done there. But can you tell me about um, you know, your experience working there and, and doing the surgeries there? Yeah, so I, I, I've had experience uh, in numerous ORs around the country at this point. Um, from large ORs with 20 rooms and, and at Dobbs Ferry uh, Westchester Orthopedic Center where there's only five orthopedic, uh, you know, five OR rooms. Right. And I love operating at Dobbs Ferry because of the sense of community there. Uh, it's a smaller hospital, patients can get in and out quickly. And because we do so much orthopedic surgery there, the team yeah. is so well versed and specialized to the point where everything is efficient, everything yeah, led, is easy. Led by, led by a nurse, Amy Saravilla, who's pretty, yeah. pretty wonderful and uh, 
make sure things run just the right Absolutely. way. Absolutely, she yeah. she gets everything done, whatever's necessary. She's uh, she's the boss, as we say. So I always like to talk about it, but the orthopedics patients also go in and they access education. Yes. Prior, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So uh, in terms of the education, our patients uh, have joint replacement classes that are run every week by the uh, nursing staff at uh, St. John's Dobbs Ferry. Um, it's very, very helpful because a lot of the questions that patients have are answered not only uh, in person, but then also they're given a packet to go home with that explains everything again. Right. So if they ever, ever have to reference uh, uh, or ask questions, everything's in that packet as well. So not only are they getting um, comprehensive uh, information in the office, in my office, for example, but they're also getting a joint replacement class where they can go through the process and really understand what to expect and they get to bring a coach with them. And they get to bring a coach with them and an advocate. In, in the post-surgical yes. process. Yeah, and so and, and that is a huge, huge help for patients and they really love it uh, because of the great information that they get and the chance to really sit down and understand what it takes to get through a joint replacement and yeah. what it takes to uh, have a successful joint replacement. And so that's really, it's a great thing that we've added um, uh, several years ago to the Dobbs Ferry um, process and the hospital there. Um, and that's one of the many reasons why Dobbs Ferry Hospital is so great. Yeah, there's it, a lot of reasons. Right, exactly. <laughs> and so, yeah. and, and like you had mentioned, um, it's a smaller hospital uh, and you know, all of our orthopedic surgeries are done at that hospital. So they're very well versed. The team is fantastic. There's only five ORs there, which is nice because the efficiency is, uh, is a lot cleaner and quicker. Um, at the hospital. Yeah. You get that personalized care that we're, we're looking for and that our patients uh, really appreciate. So. Yeah, and that's a kind of an extension of our medical group too, yeah. which is very, very much about the care and the relationship with the patient. Absolutely. So that's all wonderful. Um, but I know that we uh, want to circle around to talk a little bit about the sports medicine side of your practice because, yes. uh, you know, I was reading your bio. <laughs> And um, I, I just find this fascinating. Uh, the Baltimore Ravens, you worked with Towson University, Loyola College, uh, some high school football teams, the NBA Washington Wizards, then Stanley Cup champions, Washington Capitals. So yeah. you might have a little experience <laughs> yeah. it, with, some, with some sports medicine. Tell me about yeah. that. That's great. So yeah, during my fellowship, um, I, I had the great opportunities that you mentioned to work with all of those professional teams and collegiate teams, wow. Division One football teams, high school, and 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 even uh, even before then. So it, it it was a very very nice experience. It uh, allowed me to learn a lot about how uh, to treat patients uh, the same and differently through all of those different uh, programs. Mm -hmm and really put things into perspective for me uh, in terms of when a patient comes in, whether they're at the collegiate level or at the pro level or just a weekend warrior uh, who wants to play basketball again. Uh, being a former athlete myself, yeah. um, that really helped in that process and it continues to help today to, to help uh, relate to patients uh, in my office what, to get them back. What was your sport of choice? So I played, I played soccer. Yeah. Uh, I still play as much as I can. Um, <laughs> Things are a little bit busier than, than they used to be for me these days, yes. but, uh, but I still enjoy playing a variety of sports, including soccer, you know, throwing a football around with friends, right, playing so basketball, etc. cetera. So, athlete, I get it. Yeah, I, I, I do a little bit of everything, um, but soccer was my sport growing up. Um, I also love lacrosse, so, and I've treated a lot of patients um, uh, who've, who do the same thing. And so in that way, I can relate to them understand them, um, empathize with them when they get those injuries. Know what their goals and are. Know what their goals are. Yeah. And, and I think that's actually one of the most important things is to understand what that patient's goals are, whether it's to get back to professional sports uh, or to get back to uh, uh, you know uh, playing basketball on the weekends with friends. And so that's probably the most important thing when, when uh, treating a patient. So I, I, you know, as, again, I was sort of reading up on you, and um, I know that you have a philosophy of care in the sports medicine Absolutely. side. I'm sure on the joint replacement side too. But because this is a little bit different, can we go through what that philosophy of care is and some of the things that you really try to bring to that practice? Absolutely. So, uh, you know, my philosophy philosophy is quite simple. Um, it's always non-operative treatment first. Uh, I, even though I'm a surgeon, I love doing surgery. It's my passion. It's what I do for a living. 
Uh, I never rush any patient into surgery. And any one of my patients who I've ever had sur who've ever had surgery with me will tell you the same thing that I always let them know. It's you know if I think it's urgent, I will let them know. If not, then there are certain things that we can do prior to surgery to see if it helps. And surgery is almost a last resort uh, option for them. Right. And so I always like to go through their treatment options, the risks and benefits of both, and ultimately understand their goals, um, which is, like I said, the most important thing. If their goal is to just be able to play basketball on the weekends, maybe they don't, they don't need that big surgery uh, for that. Maybe we can manage it in a way that makes them feel better and you know, be able to do those things without the surgical procedure. But if not, and their goals are uh, different, then we can adjust accordingly and, and uh, make it work for them. Wow. So tell me about um, the non-operative treatment options that you offer. Absolutely. So uh, I usually start with physical therapy, maybe some anti-inflammatory medications. Non-opioid. Uh, Non-opioid. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sometimes it present a big problem at times. Yep. Um, one of the things that we've done is uh, we also refer to our pain management team here at St. John's. Mm -hmm. Dr. Erosa, who's the director of pain management, uh, has been a great colleague uh, and a good friend of mine. Who, and we collaborate all the time uh, to make sure that we're helping patients in the best possible ways, making sure we understand the different technologies uh, that are available to our patients right. um, and be able to provide that here at St. John's. So. Yeah. Uh, that's he's been become helpful. very popular too. Yeah, I think you you might end up being kind of a dream team. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, I, that's what I'm thinking. I I think that that's that's what's happening. That's yeah. the goal. Um, and you know we're both young, uh, uh, bright. Uh, he's also very uh, very bright physician. Yeah. Um, and uh, we understand the new technologies and and really how to treat patients the right way. So that's really exciting. It's, it's that's really exciting. Sure. So, you know, every interview that we've done we talk a little bit about all the stuff that we've covered with you but i always like to ask the question what what is your why so if you can think back to that moment when you knew doctor orthopedics what was that what was that moment yeah so it's it's, it's an interesting question i think that when i was in medical school i was sure that i was not going to be a surgeon i knew that it was going to be very difficult and tough and i was like uh you know I, that may be above what i'm looking for as i went through medical school and got to know the anatomy and exercise uh, medicine and and really get into the nitty-gritty of how it worked it was almost a natural fit for me um you know i'm into sports and athletics and exercise etc and uh when when I found out that that was its own field where I could actually, you know, learn about those specific things and then help other patients yeah. uh, with their injuries, that was immediately my goal to, to, to do that and, and, and uh, to make my impact that way. Um, as I went through residency, et cetera, it was uh, joint replacements and sports medicine that really uh, captured my interest um, and, and provided the instant gratification that you get uh, from being able to do a surgical case on a patient and have them walk almost the next day with no pain when they were debilitated with severe pain a few days before. And so that instant gratification makes everything worth it. When a patient come, walks in after a major surgery and joint replacement, gives you a big hug and says, you just saved me, I, can, I have no pain in my leg. That makes it worth it for me. And it's a good it keeps payoff. Going. Yeah, that, that's everything <laughs> for me, so. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's what that's what got me into it, and that's what really keeps me going. How'd you feel after your first surgery? My first surgery, um, I felt accomplished. I felt uh, nervous because you want the best for the patient, um, but I felt felt uh, accomplished and confident at the end of the day because I knew that all of the work that I've done for the last decade plus uh, was finally coming to that one moment. And so as you finish, Very it's exciting. almost a sense of accomplishment, yeah. really, so. Well, it's been so wonderful to talk to you and catch up and get to know you better. And um, we're so thrilled again to have you with us. So thank you for joining us today on Absolutely. Episode Reflections. And to my audience, thank you very much for being with us again. Uh, we will see you next time. Bye.